Hello from the CMS College Department of English. Welcome to the study of a chronicle of the peacock. In the story, the writer Indisar Hussain takes us through the stories and incidents that crisscross between the various religious cultures of the Indian subcontinent. Originally written in Urdu, the English translation is brought to us by Alok Bella and Vishwamitra Adil. For a better understanding of the story, let us go through three important points. This is a story that takes us through the legends and history within the Indian subcontinent. The story comes to us through the words of a male narrator. It has around 18 incidents. We are introduced to at least 11 people. Along with human beings, we also see some birds and animals, 10 or so in number. And the story is not in just one place. The writer is traveling and he takes us with him to at least 13 places. It will be good if you can take a break here and get yourself ready with a pen and paper. When you resume the video, try to note down these four items that you can pick up from this outline. Number one, the incidents. Secondly, the people. And then the birds and animals. And finally, the places that we see in the story. So now, hit the pause button, be back with some writing stationery, and then let's resume. Two ideas sum up the background of the story. One, the narrator wants to write a Mornama, the story of the peacocks. And secondly, he can't do that because he is followed by an evil spirit. Now, let us see an outline of the story which we will sum up in 16 points. Let us see the first point, number one. The story opens with a reference to India's first successful nuclear bomb test called the Smiling Buddha on 18 May 1974 in Pokhran, Rajasthan. Number two. The blast frightened the peacocks, which flew and scattered, terrified. Number three, the narrator writes a column expressing his sympathy for the disturbed birds, but the thought doesn't leave him. Point number four, he thinks that the problem follows him like the fish in the story of King Manu. Lord Vishnu came to Manu as a small fish and Manu tried to protect it but the fish began to grow bigger and bigger. And point number five, we now move to Jaipur, the pink city and the capital of Rajasthan. The narrator thinks of an early visit he had made to the place and is reminded of the many peacocks that he could see there. The next three points follow a different pattern. Points six and seven, we travel with the narrator in his imagination. And in point 8, the narrator takes us to his boyhood reminiscence where he has a conversation with his uh, dadima, his grandmother, recalling the story of the peacock, the bird of paradise. Point number 6. In his imagination, the narrator sees a forlorn duck on the shores of a sea whose water is dark and oily. The various wars, Saddam Hussein against his countrymen, the Iraqis against the Kuwaitis and the Americans against the Iraqis have polluted the world and especially the waters. Point 7. This picture is contrasted with the beautiful songs in the Manasarovar Lake as we read in the stories. Point 8. The narrator takes us to a conversation he had with his grandmother. It speaks about the fate of the peacock. It is a bird of paradise. But now, because it was deceived and cheated, it has no place of its own. Points 9 to 11 speak of 
travel to three places and point 12 indicates the appearance of a character that frightens and shocks the narrator. Let us see these points. Point 9. Travels with the narrator take us to Sravasti, the Buddhist pilgrim spot and to Delhi, especially Nizamuddin. These places that were once with the fullness of life now lie in ruins. He could see and hear the cries of peacocks that are not in groups anymore but alone and lonely. And in point 10, once again imagination takes over. The narrator reaches Indraprastha, the city of the Pandavas. Point number 11, the narrator feels that he should go back home. He has seen lots of peacocks. So he wants to write down his Mornama, a chronicle of the peacocks. Now to point number 12, the narrator senses that someone is following him. He is shocked to recognize the person, that is Ashatama, the son of Drona. The story now presents to us one great problem of mankind, war. We are taken to the situation around Kurukshetra war through the next three points, points 13 to 15. And in point 16, the narrator says, how and why war destroys peace, balance of nature, creativity and many other aspects of life. Point 13. We read about the Kurukshetra war where Ashwatthama uses the Brahmastra. He wanted the weapon to bring total ruin upon the Pandava clan. Ashwatthama receives a curse. He will have to wander alone for 3000 years with his body covered with wounds that never heal. Point 14. Ashutama's Brahmastra would have destroyed the Pandavas totally. But with the blessings of Sri Krishna, Abhiminyu's son Parikshit is restored to life. Parikshit sits on the throne of Hastinapur and brings honor to the Pandavas. Point 15. The story takes us to a conversation between Parikshit and the sage Vyasa. Vyasa too cannot answer a significant question. Why don't man understand that war destroys everything? Point 16. Wars are always with man. Ashutama's wanderings are not over. And that is how he follows the narrator, preventing him from writing a story of peace, beauty and joy the story called Mornama. The narrator reaches home but is shocked to find Ashutama still following him. Our story ends with a cry of the narrator, O oh my creator, when will this evil spirit complete his curse? When will I be able to write my Mornama, my chronicle of the peacocks? To wind up this session, may we request you to have a look at the list of uh, the places, incidents, people and other living things we met in the story. You can check this list with your own list and try to find out and get more ideas. We at the CMS College Department of English confidently hope that this session will help you in a better understanding of the Chronicle of the Peacocks.